Good morning. It is 9.27 a.m. on Sunday, January 26th, 2020. I'm Christiana Ellis, and I just got up. This is five more minutes, and because it's Sunday, I'm continuing my rewatch of Cowboy Bebop with session, excuse me, 17, Mushroom Samba. This is one of my favorite episodes. It's very silly. It's kind of just self-contained. Features a lot of Ed and Ein, and uh, it's just a lot of fun from start to finish. It's got some cool references in it. It's got a neat little farce uh, style plot line where everybody's getting in each other's way, and it's just great. So let's talk about it. So we begin as they uh, frequently are. The Bebop is out of fuel, out of food suffering for their poor luck. And uh, in particular, we find the, the crew having sort of a confrontation. There's a box of emergency rations that's empty. And Jet wants to know who ate the rations, and they're all protesting that it wasn't them. And there's, uh, you know, uh, and I, or, or rather Ed, in her pocket, finds that she has a single peanut, and it's not even a, like a double peanut with the two <laughs> nuts in it. It's just one, just half a peanut. And uh, there's a, just a fun comic moment where the, even this one tiny little peanut, she like finds it and she's like, oh, she's got it like a treasure. She hides it. She turns it around. She's about to eat it, and then everyone else is like, oh, what are you doing? And she screams this all silly. Um, and then, of course, the peanut falls to the floor when... The Bebop is hit by another ship in a hit and run, and uh, Ein gets to eat the peanut, which, of course, is the right solution, you know. I mean, if you're going to deal with, um, you know, of all of these characters, who should get to eat the peanut? Ein is the right answer. Anyway, though, uh, it, there's a little bit of wibbly-wobbliness in terms of any sort of actual science to the fiction which, you know, honestly, this show is not concerned about. But just the idea of, like, okay, well, they're out of fuel and literally just drifting on inertia to Europa. So where is this weird planet that they then crash land on after getting a hit and run? Doesn't matter. Um, anyway, so uh, it's a hit and run. And this other ship that runs into them uh, just flies away whereas they're forced to crash land on, you know, this Western planet, which is has a sign that says Western World Development Tract 8271, which the wiki informs me is a reference to the Wim Wenders film Paris, Texas, although I have not seen that, so I cannot, you know, like I, I, I can't comment further on that particular reference. Uh, but then, you know, we have a little bit more business with, uh, um, turns out, uh, Faye is feeling sick at the same time that it's discovered those emergency rations were, uh, you know, uh, expired. And so, of course, that means that Faye ate the rations because, of course, she did. <laughs> because out of that whole crew, who's going to eat a whole box of emergency rations without telling anybody? Faye is definitely will do that. Um, so in any event, uh, Jet and Spike are going to try to fix the ship. Ed initially helps, but she, it's she's not especially helpful. So they tell her, go get some food. And so, of course, Ed's mushroom adventure begins. Lots of silly stuff. Like, in, it, first, she seems like she's going to put on socks and shoes before she goes and walks around outside. But like a, like a cat or a dog, you know, when you try to put booties or something on them, she just, like, she can't even, like, stand up or walk around with the socks on. And it's very silly. So she takes them off and just heads out into this hot desert barefoot with, uh, you know, Ayn alongside. And uh, there's some, some a great little musical montage of them walking through the desert with the sort of the bouncy little synthy track, you know, doo 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 and it's it's so fun there's just so much great little animation in that sequence of ed walking in silly ways and i'm just kind of trotting alongside and <clears throat> it's i mean it's just a lot of fun 
Um, she's briefly drawn in a certain direction when she sees the hit and run ship. She's running after in that way, but on foot, you're not going to catch up with the spaceship. Uh, but then like there's a melon truck and of course, uh, he doesn't want, she, she has no cash at all. So it's also one of these things where it's like, well, I, I, I mean, I'm not sure what her plan was, <laughs> but this is where we also get introduced to one of the secondary characters uh, in this episode who's uh, named Coffee. And she is clearly a, uh, an inspiration from the Pam Greer character from the movie Coffee, uh, who uh, is just this badass black woman who is uh, Pam Greer. And that movie is, is actually great. And you know, a lot of the uh, secondary characters in this episode draw their inspiration from that era, that like 70s era of uh, cinema that was made for black audiences, you know, with the, you know, sometimes called black exploitation. Um, but uh, Coffee is a great movie and Pam Greer is awesome. And this is a character who's clearly inspired by her and we're gonna have a couple. But she's, you know, this, uh, she is also a bounty hunter. She's looking for this guy, Domino Walker. Um, and, uh, she buys a melon because uh, I guess, sure, why not? But Ed and Ein sneak into her trunk to get a ride into town. And then, of course, this is the first instance of them just messing up everybody else's deal. Because when the, you know, the, the cops want to check her trunk because they're searching for someone dealing illegal mushrooms, they find a, a little kid and a dog in, in her trunk apparently unconscious even though they had just gone to sleep and then they sneak away in the chaos as the cops proceed to try to arrest coffee then she runs up after a guy eating a chili dog and it's there's it's, it's, again it's just lots of like the just to simply describe it does not do justice to the fun of the animation and the vocal performance of ed and i seeing someone a block away eating a chili dog and immediately just sprinting in that direction <gasps> only to be plunged into the depths of utter despair because he finishes the chili dog himself instead of giving it to them. <laughs> and it's, it's fun. But of course this guy is Domino Walker, the mushroom dealer. We don't really know that yet cause it's all still building, but while they are there, they're confronted by yet another one of these uh, characters named Shaft, who says he's one of the Shaft brothers and he's dragging a coffin behind him, um, which is a reference to a, mo a Western movie called Django, which is kind of a fun, like, there's some layers there. But there's a lot of silliness where he says, you know, he's doing this, I'm dragging this coffin behind me because I'm going to put you in it because my brother ate one of your mushrooms and then laughed so hard he twisted his intestines inside out. And then the other guy's like, that sounds like a pretty fun way to die. And it's just all very heightened and silly and ridiculous and made extra so by the fact that Ed's just standing there like, hmm? listening to these guys and then a bus runs over the coffin and it's all just ridiculous and silly they, they go off chasing each other but drop some mushrooms and then of course we get the fantastic sequence where everyone but ed tries one of the mushrooms and begins to have episodes because they're drug mushrooms of course they are you know we have the fun little sequence of i'm eating one and then sort of hopping around like a little toy beep 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 beep, beep squeak and then, um, you know, seeing that, Ed says, of course, the right thing to do here is to perform experiments on the crew by feeding them these possibly <laughs> hallucinogenic mushrooms. And then we, but we get these, these really fun sequences where, uh, you know, the various crew experience their hallucinations. I feel like Jets is the one that's, like it's it's fun, but it's lackluster compared to Spike and Faze because we don't really get to see any dramatic visuals or anything. But he gets kind of giggly. He's talking to his bonsai trees, and you know, there's a little bit like, oh, so that's the secret to the universe. It's so simple. Wait, who am I again? And and it's it's fun, but compared to Spike and Faze uh, hallucinations you know, those are, you know, imaginative with the animation and everything. I can't help but wonder if maybe Jets was like 
cut down or something for just animation reasons. I don't know. Anyway, though, Spike is starting to climb the stairs up into the bridge, but he starts hallucinating that the stairs just extend upwards, 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 like hundreds and hundreds of feet into the distance. And he's climbing these stairs, and there's a nice little bit of metaphor in in the he comes across a frog who says hey don't you know this is the stairway to heaven which is an, another little rock and roll reference but uh you know spike is just like you know get out of the way stupid frog and he just keeps on going and the frog's like well excuse me but you know just to put that in context with spike just the idea of climbing the stairway to heaven and he's not going to let anyone tell him not to do that and that's kind of a microcosm of spike's whole deal uh, meanwhile Faye still in the bathroom because she's still dealing with some of her uh, sickness from before but uh, she starts hallucinating that she shrinks down and then the bathroom floods and she's swimming there's a fun little shot of of her doing <laughs> press stroke just standing there in the bathroom. Um, but in the meantime, with all the rest of the crew indisposed, Ed discovers, oh, this mushroom dealer is a bounty head. So let's, she's going to get him and save the day, Ed and Ayn. And so they head off on a scooter. And then we get this amazing action sequence where all of these different characters that we'd encountered up to this point are all trying to catch the mushroom dealer on the train. Um, I guess we're skipping ahead a little bit. Like at first, there's a sequence where Ed and Ayn find that the hit and run ship is not only the mushroom dealer's ship, but it's also where he grows the mushrooms. But we also see him picking the mushrooms and see that there's lots of different kinds being grown and that he's kind of not picky. He's a little sloppy with the uh, with what kinds of mushrooms there are. He's just sort of mixing them together. He smells one, says that one's bad, and then puts it in the bag anyway. Uh, but uh, there's the whole chase sequence on the train where, you know, the uh, uh, Shaft brother shows up uh, with... And, and steals the melon truck, punching out the melon truck guy and driving up to get on the train. And then Coffee shows up and Ed and Ayn are there. And like, and Ayn, Ed and Ayn are just taking all of these cool characters and just disrupting their whole deal. It's, it reminds me of how, you know, because there's like a system to Blackjack where theoretically there is a best way to play it, but part of success to the degree you could have it is reliant on the other players also playing the smart way right so you can kind of calculate the rough statistics of what how likely it is for you to get the next card assuming that the other players are doing the right thing also and so the point is that they're all doing this cool action hero stuff but ed just kind of blund plowing through the middle of what they're doing throws everybody off and it's all very fun and silly. Um, and of course, uh, eventually the, it all comes to a halt because there's a cow standing in front of the train track. So the train has to stop. Um, Ed finally manages to capture this guy, although he's this big guy and it's not clear what she even expected to do with him once she was sitting on him. But what he does is he's like, no, stop here. I'll give you the mushrooms. These are worth way more than my bounty. And she's like, and she, you know, is like, is it? You know, she she doesn't know. She kind of admits she does wasn't even paying attention. Doesn't know how much his bounty is, or how much the mushrooms would be, or how to tell the difference between the good mushrooms and the bad mushrooms. So she takes the mushrooms, assuming that they are actually worth more than the bounty, and uh, brings them back. And the others of the crew are actually relatively uh, impressed that it's like, oh, you've secured these really valuable mushrooms. That's actually very cool. Only for the police to show up looking for illegal mushrooms. They're hesitant, but then it turns out, oh, nope, these mushrooms are just ordinary shiitake mushrooms. They've got a whole bag full of shiitake mushrooms, which in perfect bebop sense leaves them slightly improved over their previous circumstance in the sense that they have food now, but now it's only shiitake mushrooms. And so they're sick of eating shiitake mushrooms every day, but they're continuing on in their journey through the stars. 
and it was all just a very silly episode with a lot of um, great animation and uh, fun references. And uh, I just so it's not very weighty, but it's just fun and silly and I love it. So uh, I'll go ahead and uh, leave it uh, there. And so next week we're going to talk about uh, the session 18 Speak Like a Child, which is another Faye backstory episode. And we'll be doing that next week on Sunday. So in the meantime, I'll talk to you tomorrow for five more minutes.